In this video, we'll be providing a practical demonstration of the new wedge profiler included in the MXU 512 update. Uh, to show how this is done, we have our uh, X3 demonstration block. For transducer, we have a 5L16A10 connected to a very worn uh, SA10 and 55S wedge. Uh, this wedge was likely used either in a scanner or mainly, but worn down to the point where the settings in the instrument no longer match what's actually uh, physically attached to the wedge, or for the transducer. For comparison purposes, we have here on this side, brand new, um, straight from the factory, SA10 and 55S wedge. If I put these two together, you can see here that the thickness doesn't match. Uh, the wedge is also worn, so it'll rock on the part. So not only is the height difference, but there is also an angle difference. And this is going to equate to uh, not just an error in depth measurement, but also an error in the actual refracted angle that exits the wedge. So we definitely need to make an adjustment here, but in this case, because the wet angle is also off, um, a standard wedge delay calibration isn't going to work. Uh, we can see this play out here if we couple to the, to the block, and we go ahead and measure out one of these angles. So this is on the three quarter deep hole and you can see over here on the right hand side, we're measuring this at about 580. So we definitely need to make an adjustment here. So what I'm gonna do is actually just take this off of the block. We're going to just wipe off the bottom of the wedge so that we don't have any couplet there. And we're just gonna let it sit. As long as you're coupled to the wedge, that's all we need. Uh, the wedge profiler is accessed through the scan plan of the unit. So we're going to go back into the scan plan. Uh, we're not going to make any adjustments, but we're going to navigate to the probes and wedges tab and access the profiler. So the way this works is we fire uh, one element at a time through the transducer. And the large reflection that shows up here is the re reflection from the bottom of the wedge. Uh, the system sets this up so that the bottom of the wedge is already gated. Uh, you do have control over the gate and gain so that you can make sure that you're identifying the appropriate signal. And this also works as a very, very simple element check. Uh, so you can see that here, I get a reflection from each element across the probe. So uh, this also works as a quick, easy way to make sure that all of your elements are firing. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to actually measure the height and use the difference from the first element to the last element to measure the angle. So the system will do this for us. Down here at the bottom, we select measure. The instrument's gonna calculate the actual angle, physical angle of the wedge and calculate the height from the bottom of the wedge to the first element. So on the left-hand side here, it gives us what the system has by default on say a brand new wedge. So a brand new wedge should have been 36 degrees and 274 in height. On our worn wedge, it's actually 33 and a half degrees and 196 in height. So you have a couple options here. Um, you can reset this to nominal, which means you just go ahead and I'll just take the values that the instrument thinks it should be and I'll use those. If I push accept profile here, it's gonna go ahead and use the new measurements for the wedge. So obviously in this case, we're far enough off in both angle and height that I would wanna take the measured values. So we click accept profile here, and then we hit done, exit the wedge profiler, and then we hit done again to exit the scan plan. So this has gone and adjusted the wedge settings that it's using. Now when we go back to the block, I should see a more appropriate depth measurement for that third hole. So we'll go ahead, there's our first hole, pull back here, on our second hole, and there we are at 750, which it should be. Uh, a, a quick, easy way to check and make sure that uh, the angles came out appropriately, if I go ahead and just right click on the screen here and put a reference cursor down, uh, I know if the angles of the sound exiting the wedge are appropriate, if I can kind of maintain a straight line depth coming out and onto this hole. So if I move across the block, I see here that that side drill hole signal maintains its position kind of along that reference cursor line. 
that gives me a, a rough idea on how accurate the angles are exiting. So I see it follows that line quite well. Of course, I can always just take my angle and adjust it to a couple different spots and just verify that the depth measurement is accurate. But this gives us a quick, easy way to not just adjust for a wedge that's been worn down a little bit too much, but I also make sure um, that the accuracy, the angles are maintained and gives us an option to adjust for the wedge before needing to do a wedge delay calibration. Uh, if you have any questions on how this is accomplished or any other questions on how this can be used, just direct those to the support team.